Today, we will be learning about intermediate moves in chess and why they are important. By definition, an intermediate move is a tactic where instead of playing the expected move in a position, the player first poses a threat that must be answered, and only then after does he play the expected move. Intermediate moves are important because they can help us get out of disadvantageous positions and they can also allow us to gain advantages. It is much easier to understand what intermediate moves are by looking at examples, so it is fine if you are confused right now by the definition. All right, let's hop right in. In this position, white is up a pawn. However, it seems that white is in a disadvantage because black's knight on b4 is forking and attacking both white's rook on d5 and also his rook on a2. It seems that if white decides to move one of these rooks out of danger, black can just capture the other one and gain an advantage. For example, if white decides to move his a2 rook out of danger, for example to d2, black can take the rook on d5. Likewise, if white moves his d5 rook out of danger to d2, black can just take the rook on a2. And in both of these situations, black manages to win a rook. Fortunately though for white, he can save his position by making use of intermediate moves and keep both of his rooks. To do this, white moves his rook from d5 to d8, posing an immediate threat that must be answered. In this case, he checks the black king. And since it is check, black must move out of check and does not have time to capture the knight on a2. So here, he must answer white's threat by moving his king to g7. And now, in this position, white can move his a2 rook out of danger. For example, he can move to d2. And now in the final position, black can take neither one of white's rooks. So how did this happen again? Let's rewind. By moving his d5 rook to d8, white moved his first rook out of danger. Usually, black would be able to take one of white's rooks in a situation, but since white created an immediate threat of checking black's king, black had to deal with this threat first. So, after having to deal with white's threat, white managed to gain time, which allowed him to move his second rook out of danger. And now with both rooks out of danger, black can't take either one of them, and black can't gain an advantage. So, as you can see from this example, intermediate moves are extremely powerful, and with just one intermediate move, White was able to save a whole rook and change the position from better for black to better for white. Let's go through another example of intermediate moves. In this position, let's start by analyzing the continuation that starts with White taking the black knight on d5. When white takes the knight on d5, black can either capture the knight with his bishop, or he can also capture the queen on d2 with his queen on a5. However, black's only move here is to take the queen on d2, because if he takes the knight on d5, white can take black's queen, and white has just won a queen for free. Black doesn't want this, so he has to take the queen on d2. Now, it would make perfect sense for white to take the queen on d2 with his rook. However, white can make use of an intermediate move here to gain a huge advantage, capturing the e7 pawn with his knight first. And this puts black under check. With this immediate threat, black is forced to deal with it, and he has to move his king out of danger to h8. And only after white has made a threat that must be answered does he play the expected move of taking the queen on d2. This intermediate move of checking black is essential in this position because if white did not and immediately took the queen on d2, black would be able to take the knight on d5 and this position would remain equal. As opposed to playing an intermediate move, saving the knight on d5 
and remaining a knight up in the final position and maintaining an advantage. So as you can see from this example, intermediate moves can not only help us get out of danger, but they can also help us gain an advantage. So it is useful to always be on the lookout for these in your own games. Now, let's try to solve some puzzles to make sure we understand what intermediate moves are. Let's look at this example. Here, how should white continue? Pause the video and I will reveal the solution in three seconds. Here, it seems completely logical to just capture the knight on g4 for free with the h3 pawn. However, in this position, both the black knight on g4 and our knight on c3 are under threat. So if we just casually take the black knight, black can also capture our knight on c3 and the position remains fairly equal. Luckily, though, we have an intermediate move here that allows us to gain an advantage. We can move our knight from c3 to b5 which simultaneously moves our knight out of danger. You can see it moves the knight out of danger and also attacks the bishop on d4. And this creates a double threat of us capturing the bishop on d4 and also capturing the knight on g4. So on the next move, if black moves one of these pieces out of danger, we can just take the other. So for example, if black moves the bishop, we can take the knight. And likewise, if he moves the knight, we can just take the bishop for free. And this intermediate move of knight b5, creating the threat of taking on d4, allows us to gain an advantage regardless of which piece black decides to move in this final position. Let's look at another example here. White decides to move his pawn from e5 to e6. Try to figure out if this move was a good or bad move. Pause the video and I'll reveal the solution in 3 seconds. When white moves the pawn to e6, black is forced to take the queen on d4 with his queen on g7. Because if he moves this queen out of danger, for example, if he moves here, White can just take the d7 bishop for free. So, taking the queen on d4 is black's only viable continuation. Now, in this position, the logical move would just be to capture white's queen back with the rook by taking on d4. But if we do that, black can just take the pawn on e6. And now in this position, he remains a pawn up and is therefore at an advantage. Instead, we can play an intermediate move to seize the advantage. Instead of taking the black queen immediately, white can first capture the bishop on d7, and this puts black in check. Since black is being checked and threatened, he is forced to respond to this threat, and only after should white take the queen on d4. Comparing the continuation where we don't play the intermediate move to where we play the intermediate move, we can see that the intermediate move allowed us to win a bishop for free. So e6 is in fact a good move. To sum up today's lesson, an intermediate move is where instead of playing an expected move, we first pose a threat that must be dealt with, and only then after do we play the expected move. This threat can either be a check, or it could just be simply attacking another enemy piece and allows us to get out of tough situations, and it can also allow us to gain an advantage. These are extremely powerful, so it is good to be aware of them in your own games. That is all. Thank you all for watching.